So I'll just, I'll just talk for 10 minutes if that's okay, sorry. Um, right, so um, I, was, I was just going to follow up uh, uh, sort of Liz's... Um, uh, actually, have you got your one? Can you put your one up? And just, just try and find um, one of your plans of spillers and I'll talk about that. Um, yeah, so what, what I was going to do, I prepared a uh, PowerPoint, but it, it was on the wrong format apparently. Um, what I was going to do is talk uh, really about uh, what, what is uh, success um, for Usborn, and I was going to use an, an example um, um, of uh, one of the aspects of success is how the different stakeholders in Usborn in, in Usborn actually view it and is often conflicting. One type of stakeholder thinks it's a success and another one thinks it's a disaster. And I was going to use the example of the big wheel. I don't know how many of you have heard of this YI wheel. Have, have any of you heard of this proposal? <laughs> Which is... <laughs> um, and I was going to... We've got one of, uh, one of Liz's slides that shows Spiller's Key down by the time. Um, I had various pictures showing, showing you about that. Okay, so the, uh, the, uh, the, this thing about, um, about what is success, I mean, I think there, there are various ways of looking, and I was going to suggest two or three, um, apart from this idea of stakeholders. And one of them is uh, there has been um, a, plan re um, a plan produced for who's been, um, the who's been regeneration plan, which was produced about 10 years ago, and that had various aspects of this live, work, and play idea for who's been in it. And in each of those, so the live thing, there was various sort of targets in there, uh, how many houses you'd like to see in who's been. And uh, in, the, in the work one, there was various, various targets about the number of jobs you were going to try and create, number of businesses in who's been, number of artists, number of studios, all that sort of thing. Um, and in the play thing, there was um, uh, um, a sort of analysis of what it was like 10 years ago in terms of visitors, in terms of leisure, and all that sort of thing. Um, and sort of the targets in there, how many visitors were, would, you, would you be, um, be trying to achieve in Usborne, all within this mixed use type of idea, this, this, this idea of not having different zones in Usborne for one particular use, but mixing it all up together, which is a very difficult. Um, um, very difficult to achieve because you can't actually write anything down and say that should be housing there, that side should be housing, that side should be something else next to it. It's uh, because one of the problems with Usman is, uh, or one of the advantages of it, is the fact that it's not owned by one particular um, organization or business or person. The city council owns some land there, and we'll get onto that in a second in my example, uh, but not very much land probably about 60 or 70 different owners of property in, in Usborne, different plots and different buildings. So that, that uh, in one sense, makes, makes regeneration much more difficult. Um, and you can see with 35 years on into, into the regeneration, we're probably only 60 or 70 percent there. That's what, another one of, the, um, one of the measures of it. If you look at a map of Usborne and you and yet, and you look at all the various sites there. Which which of those sites have been have been developed with new buildings? Which of the existing buildings there have been converted and refurbished into new uses? And you can work out a percentage. You know, eventually you want to. You know, I, I think at the moment it's about 60 or 70 percent of the land in Usborne. So after 35 years, we're just over halfway there. By the time we, you get to everything having been done, you probably got to start again. And this is one of the things about regeneration. It's, it's a continuous process, isn't it? Um, right, so I've got uh, five minutes. Um, my example of the big wheel. Um, uh, this is uh, um, a lot of the development in the 35 years, a lot of the, a lot of the regeneration has been quite small scale. And that fits in with what people like. Um, I think in a lot of ways, lots of things together, lots of juxtapositions, lots of um, small-scale things. This big wheel proposal is uh, a massive big change in Usborne, 
um, uh, for instance, the total number of visitors that come to Usbin, uh, it's uh, um, we we trying to upgrade the figures or sort of update the figures, but the last time we had a reasonably detailed thing was about six or seven years ago, and it was about 400,000 visits a year to all the various small scale things. The biggest one was seven stories with 80,000 visitors a year. This big wheel predicts 800,000 visits a year to the big wheel and the complex there, so it's doubled what's what comes to the whole loose burn at the moment. So it's a massive, um, a, a massive uh, um, a sort of proposal um, if it comes off. Um, these 800 visits, they reckon only 20% of those will come by car because it's a city center location. <coughs> I don't know whether any of you would agree that it is. <laughs> I think most people would say it's not a city centre location, the city centre location would be somewhere here. <laughs> so um, they've only provided 170 car parking spaces for all these visitors. So and they provided that on the uh, on the key side. So um, if you have you got a one looking the other way anyway. So so looking um, not that one. Uh, yeah, we've got one looking along the spillers somewhere. Yeah, so, um, <coughs> uh, yeah, I think further back you had one. So, um, this, this proposal um, is, uh, is, um, is controversial in a lot of ways, um, that, uh, both in terms of its impact on, um, on, uh, on the infrastructure in Usman, there's already a car parking problem there but also um, on a number of other, um, on a number of other um, um, sort of aspects of it. Firstly, um, the site next door to where this is going is one of the sites that Igloo, the develop, Igloo developers, the developers of the mailings and of Lower Steenberg's yard that Liz showed you. So they've got another three sites. Um, in their framework agreement with the city council who own those sites, and those three sites are Malmo Key that Liz showed you the, uh, the, the drawing of the artist's impression. I don't think that'll ever happen with that thing there, but it's a good. <laughs> um, and they've got a, a site next to the time, next to the time bar. But more importantly, they've got a site which uh, is this site here, which is next to, which is basically where the cycle hub is at the moment. Um, so their, their intention in their discussion so over the last year or two has been that they would pull the cycle up down because they need to make money out of that site and they build a six story block of flats on the cycle up site and on the, on the small site next door that they've got. This is right next to where this big wheel is going to go and, and La Igloo aren't very happy about trying to, well, first of all, they're saying it wouldn't be a very good residential environment with all these visitors and all this, uh, um, you know, it's not just a big wheel, it's a, it's, it, it's like the gate, it's, it's a massive, there's like five other buildings all with uh, um, franchises like um, um, bars, there's indoor golf and all sorts of um, sort of indoor leisure type things. So it's quite, not, and it's also a massive LED screen that they make money out of advertising on. So what Igloo is saying is that that's, that's going to, first of all, make actually living in the houses that they intend to build next door not a very good um, experience. But more importantly, underneath is they think that actually selling those houses might be a lot more difficult next to a massive thing. So they've got a financial interest in opposing big wheel proposal. Um, okay, so, and the, and the second thing is, I don't know whether anyone's been slightly further along Spillers Quay, and at the far end of Spillers Quay um, is a much more industrial area that Usburn, uh, the creative cluster of Usburn is slowly filtering into. Just past the Mushroom Works, there's um, uh, a big, big employer, British Engines, which employs, used about 400 people there as part of a much larger <coughs> complex um, and uh, they have forklift trucks going across the main entry point, the main road that, come, that uh, Big Wheel are, are saying that most of these, these visitors will come down. 
and then they move uh, quite heavy material um, across their site there, and so they are objecting to uh, to the big wheel. So Italy on one side for housing is objecting, and uh, and and British engines on the other side for sort of traditional industries objecting. Um, so and the, the other thing is I had a slide of. Uh, uh, the public car park, which at the moment is next to the hub, um, which is full of three, it's full of 300 cars every day. Some of those are park and ride people that come there and then I catch the queue bus into town. But um, a lot of the, a lot of them are also um, people that work in the Toppy factory. The Toppy factory hasn't got any parking itself. What's got disabled five dis disabled spaces. Um, and uh, there's probably about 80, 80, 80 workers that come by car to the toffee factory every day and park in spillers. As the mailings, there isn't enough parking. Uh, Lois Steenberg's yard proposed that Liz showed you hasn't got any parking. So at the moment, between Igloo and, and uh, Big Wheel, all the, all the public parking is going to disappear down there. So what implications has that got? So. Um, People, the, the people in Usburn, the, the trust, and all sorts of people around there are trying to weigh up the pros and cons of this. And the city council are now suddenly starting to try and put all this, all this together. But I think um, it is, you know, some people like the idea. You know, uh, one of the problems with Usburn at the moment is there isn't a lot of footfall um, down there. So people trying to do retail businesses or rely on um, passing trade. Um, there isn't, there aren't, uh, you know, when you've walked around Usbin, there aren't a lot of other people apart from other school parties, apart from at the big, uh, the big events like Usbin Festival or the late shows and stuff like that. So some people like the idea of lots more, lots of these visitors coming down to Usbin. Some of the businesses and landowners in that part of Usbin can see, ah, oh, land prices are going to go up, they'll be able to sell their properties at much higher prices. Um, so the, um, and so uh, that number of visitors coming in is going to mean that some of the uh, some of the infrastructure um, sort of work that needs to be done would probably would take you know 10 or 20 years to do um, would probably have to happen straight away. Like uh, in front of the free trade bar at the moment, there's um, there's cars coming past there between the bar and the beer garden, which is a disaster waiting to happen. So. You know that might be a route that these cars come in. So something will be done about that. So oh, I think something will be done about about ships coming in and mooring um, on the on the Usman at the moment. There aren't very many of those. Something will be done about the cycleways and pedestrian routes in that area. So if this thing did happen, there are some pros to it, but also a lot of cons. So. Um, and the different stakeholders, you can see what, what I've talked about, have different attitudes to this. Um, some, of the, some of the existing people in Usburn like the idea of Usburn being you know, how it was 20 years ago. Not many people going there, a bit of a hidden gem. Or the, 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 they can get into, into bars and, and um, or do stuff in Usburn without lots of other people being there. And other people see it as a, as a boost to Usburn. So, that's uh, my little example of the, uh, and I'm sorry about the, uh, <laughs> the um, PowerPoint not being there.